All right, guys, before I get going here, I want you to remember one important thing. I am not here to enable your covetous nature, okay? So I know what you're doing. Stop. Do not covet my stuff. A very practical issue that I need to solve, a problem that I need to solve, and this is serious. So get a hold of yourself. Not like that, get a hold of yourself, just regular. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. I am building pit guards that go on these vintage arch tops so I can hot rod them up and put pickups and electronics on it without drilling any additional holes in the top of the guitar and using any mounting holes that are there like on the side. You see that right there? But there is a problem. Uh, besides most people threw away the pit guards, there's no brackets and the brackets I get or that are available over the internet are like these. I got two options. The one with the curve and the one that's not curved, chrome and black. And it doesn't take a math expert to figure something out. And here's that problem. The hole to mount the top of the pit guard on this one is up there. See how far it is from the top? Look at this one. It's way down there. This one kind of somewhere in between. When you get on the sides, it's a whole plethora of some. That one's right there. You see where that one is in the middle there. This one doesn't have one anymore. I think somebody filled it in. This one has two holes. This one has one. This one's in the middle of the radius. This one is not. There's one that's halfway down the neck. This one is in the same place. Yeah, hi Bob Log, the Bob Log guitar. Hey, I should give you a link right up there right about now. This old Patrician is has that there, and it's got one on the side there, but they're all in completely different places. So, when you start using these, they might not match up, and especially if they start going in a radius right there where that bends, and this is wider than the radius, guess what? The pressure ends up on each edge and you can crack your arch top. So what this episode is about is taking a cookie tin and common tools that you have around the house including anything heavy you can bend a cookie tin with like this old iron and creating your own brackets basically for free customizable to fit radiuses, lengths, whatever, one hole, two, whatever you need. So, I'm going to apologize that you did not see my face at the beginning of the episode. You'll get over it, but let's get to the bench. And I'm going to show you how to do this very quickly because you remember the last episode on the playlist for the Archcraft Arch Top. Hey, Mrs. Olson. We had finished this pit guard. Now we need to mount it, then we'll do the electronics, and then we can make it scream with its new pickup. Let's hit the bench. Oh, don't forget to subscribe and give me a like. Give me a like now, you know you're gonna like this. I mean, do you like butter cookies? No, nobody likes butter cookies. That's why this 14 pound tin is empty in three hours, right? Okay, let's hit the bench, let's go. All right, guys, wasn't that ridiculous? Yeah, I agree. I couldn't even get all my arch tops out to show y'all. So, well, maybe next time. So, we're at a point on this Archcraft guitar. In case you haven't seen my other videos about this, they're going to be on a playlist right about there, right about now. Anyway, we've got this old Archcraft. It was made between 1933 and 1937 by the K Company. This thing was junked out. It had a hole in the body. You see that? It had cracks over here on the other side. The binding was terrible. It was coming off the bottom, so we replaced the binding on top and bottom. And now, we have just recently fixed up the fretboard. Checking the camera angle here. And now, it's time to put some electronics on here. Oh my gosh, I almost 
committed the cardinal sin of YouTube channels about building guitars out of junk. The cardinal sin to forget to announce the matchbook of the episode. Oh, the matchbook of the episode? That's right, it's Evans Friendly Shoes in Escondido, California. Now, I don't want you confusing Evans Friendly Shoes with David Evans, who has given us so much in terms of his publications and articles and books about the blues and even his ability to play guitar himself and show us what 1930s music really sounded like when it was 1930. That's not Evans Friendly Shoes, but I want you to think about this. It's really important that you have friendly shoes, right? Imagine if you had angry shoes. Well, I talked to the world's greatest Dodger over here, Billie Jean King, the world's greatest Dodger. And uh, she said, yeah, you definitely do not want angry shoes. So when you need some shoes, go to Evans Friendly Shoes. Matchbook the episode, Evans Friendly Shoes. As soon as I told everybody I was going to do that, everybody started freaking out. Oh my God, this is a period correct instrument. And it sounded good before I did anything. In fact, there's going to be something up there right about now that shows you a pair of slim playing this before I started working on it. So uh, the goal here is to hot rod it up, put a pickup on it, not put any holes in it that aren't here already. And we're going to do that by putting this pit guard and I'm burning up my cards here but there's an episode right up, up there right about now on how I made this for next to nothing using this fancy tool that we made ourselves. anyway so now I have to now that this is ready to go I have to mount this on here and there's a little problem and here's that problem first thing we're going to do is put a rag up here so we don't mar up this thing but these pit guards mount through holes either over here or and over here or sometimes there's a hole right up here on the top of the of body and holes over here sometimes those holes are around halfway over here sometimes they're in the middle of the radius sometimes there's two sometimes there's one sometimes that hole is here sometimes it's down here sometimes it's here so these universal brackets don't always work for you so let's take a look at this one first and then we'll compare it to another one okay on this arch craft I want you to notice that the two holes one there right below the binding and one right there are in the middle of the radius the curve of this body and I want you to notice here that there are also two holes one there where I've put the silver screw tip in and one there again right below the binding notice that there is no hole up here either up here halfway down halfway in the middle and there are no holes up on the top here to mount anything okay okay this is a KN2 now remember K made Archcraft for Archcraft um, and you're gonna see this guitar show up in an episode called comb over do over because when I got it there was a comb here supporting a half of a bridge and we're gonna see what was going on with the neck in this one but I want you to pay attention to this one here because when I turn it up, what do we got here? Well, there's no hole in the center of the radius. There's one off to the side over here. So there are not two holes in the center of the radius. There's only one hole. It's right below the binding. And then up here, there are no holes on the top, the body, either close to the binding or whatever but there is one hole to mount everything on the top, the top of the pit guard, and it's right there a ways down the body. So, all these different guitars, even though they're made by a few suppliers, 
are not the same when it comes to how everything is mounted. Now we're still on this KN2 right now. So if I want to mount this here, all I have to do is I can put a little dot of paint or something, a marker right there, and then just set this on where I want it, like so. And I will know where to drill the bottom. And then over here, it's just a matter of coming up over here. But remember, I need to get this up so I can hide potentiometers under here and run the wiring up through the F hole so all of this is hid. I'm not going to drill uh, anything else. So I need to get some space up here, like so. And I really don't want to drill any more holes. So I've got a pickup that will mount here by putting... Uh, uh, screw holes through a tab that runs through there but this one here is kind of difficult in order to do this I need to beef this up and put spacers in here and whatever now let's look at the side of this thing here um, the way this is built I can take this bracket here and I can mount it right there and it's going to give me how much room about this much that's not enough to put potentiometers under so I guess I'm gonna bend this or do something so I'm gonna to have to fabricate this thing to begin with I don't want to do that now this one unlike this one has a bow coming up out of it so if I put this here like this well look it bows down and doesn't go to the same place I actually need this to be up higher like so plus we start looking at how this one works when I put this on here you're gonna find that the end of it sticks out do you see that right there I can't have that all right we're back to the arch craft remember there's two holes up here well this one I need some space underneath it so I could use this one here but look it puts it above the fingerboard I don't want that it's got to be below the fingerboard just barely so none of these holes this one hole even if I drill another one it's going to put it right up on top of it that won't work for me now when it comes to the side one I'm in a little bit better situation here because this one actually has two holes let me pull this out of here if I mount this here well that bottom hole fits like so but the second hole doesn't fit at all so that means i got to drill another hole in here which i'm not going to do okay this one has the advantage of having this bend on it so i can once this is done i can bend this up but here's what i really don't like about this one may not mean a lot to everybody but this doesn't match the radius of this okay so all my weight of everything going on up here which is going to be more substantial than any normal pit guard because I'm going to put electronics underneath here when I start cranking these screws down this edge and this edge are going to ride the they're not going to ride the wood they're going to focus right there and right there and that may not be a big deal to somebody but I think it's a big deal so what I would like to see is something that was kind of like this that was kind of concaved a little bit or at least took into account that I'm not going to load isolate everything right there and possibly crack this but none of these pre-made things seem to be a fit for me and you've seen a plethora that's the word of the day plethora it means more than one uh, when it comes to arch tops and people that covet arch tops but none of these seem to fit everything even though they're universal and I think if these were slotted like these are up here that would help you but some of them are too long too short and these things are nine bucks a piece so let me show you something really easy that allows us to customize this to exactly what we need all right we're going to take this cookie tin here um, it's best to have a cookie tin that is smooth which means this top is good um, the bottom not so much I would really love this as you'll see later if these were running straight but I can also use the side here because it's got this whole section that isn't ridged and so I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut the sides out of it 
with my Malco estate sale find nippers and get this part here that's flat in the center that's usable and I'll check in with you in a minute. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you, very important, important. Do you see that these cookies are imported from Denmark? That's really important. You know why? Because if you ain't Dutch, you ain't much, son. Okay, I've cut the lid in half and took the edge off and all the seams there and ended up with this. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that I have a straight edge on this thing. And so I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay this straight edge. It doesn't really matter where as long as I'm inside there. And I am going to draw a line here like this. And then I'm going to take my tin snips and I'm going to make sure that I'm as straight as possible on that line isn't watching me cut this is advanced scissors if you get really good with scissors on paper when you're in elementary school you have a promising career doing this I guarantee you now that is very straight it is also very sharp and that's one of the issues that we have to think about later on and we'll address that oh my how festive bouncy 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 all right, I am not going to want to work with a curved surface, but I don't want to waste anything. So we'll just cut that off right there. Now, let's say that this works for me, except the holes aren't in the right place. So what I want to do is I want to give myself a little slack. I'm going to lay this across the edge like this. And the first thing I'm going to do is put a mark right there. Then... I'm going to put a mark down here that lines up with that mark so I can put a straight edge on it. You with me? Then I'm going to take this and this and flip it like this. And that's going to give me the length of this thing. You see what I did there? So I marked the width, gave myself two marks so I can take a straight edge and connect those like so. And then I went down to the combined length with everything with the bends and ended up right there. Okay, you see that? Now what I want to do is I want to cut this right there like so. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that like this, okay? But I want to know where that mark is right there, okay? Really important. This is a vice. It will have to do until the Chick Flick Teal model comes out. But you recall that I have... A mark there and one there that represents the width of this bracket that mysteriously might work for me it really doesn't matter how wide you need your bracket you just mark it off like here like I did anyway for the sake of clarity I'm gonna put this piece of tape that part right there on that edge and that part right there and so you can see that wherever I go here it's as wide as that bracket. Now, I'm going to take my vise. I'm going to clamp this so the teeth of my vise are right at that line. And I'm going to clamp this down like so. It's important you get this right and straight. Okay, there we go. Now, I am going to decide whether or not I want this fancy graphic on the outside or on the inside. So we're just going to put this away because I'm not going to do free product advertising for somebody in that's Dutch that I don't even know who they are and they're not even a subscriber. Anyway, watch this. I'm going to tighten this up. I'll make sure it's tight. And then I'm going to bend this forward like this. You see that? Look at that. Now I'm going to take my trusty splitting maul that you've seen me use a bunch of times. I'm going to move the camera maybe. And I'm going to make sure that, that edge is nice like that. Now I may have to move this. Remember right, lefty loosey righty tighty. I'm going to have to move that down a little bit depending on the length of the bracket. And I'm going to get that like that. Okay. You're with me. I'm going to pull this out of here. You see that? Here we go. I'm going to pull this tape out of here. Like this. Okay. 
Now, I am going to just bend this over itself like this. See, I got that started. Now, let me turn this around so you can see. I'm going to use this surface here, and I'm just going to tap this down. I'm going to use care that I bend along that line and get that close. Remember, when you're using this stuff, it's sharp. So now I can take this and bend it over on itself like that. You see that? You want to make sure that that line is crimped real nice. Now, what easy way to do that is to open this up and take a minute and just run this down. And tighten this up like this, open it again, and get this end piece. Now, the problem that we have here now is that there are sharp ends. I'm getting ahead of myself here. But do you see that? Ooh, clean one owner. But I don't want this like this. I don't want these ends to be sharp. So, what I want to do is I want to take just a little bit of the edge of this thing. What's left up here. You with me? Right up here. And I want to mark off about a third of the width of what we've bent over. So I'm going to take my straight edge like this. Okay. See what I did there? Maybe I'll give it just a little bit more. We don't want it as wide as, look at the price tag, finally came off. It would be nice if somebody was trying to shoplift that or change the tag, right? But we don't do that kind of stuff, do we? Anyway, you see there? I'm going to mark about that much off. I have no idea if the cam camera angle is working here. And this tape isn't sticking for me, but you get the idea. I want a uniform overhang like this. Can you see that? Good. Now, I'm going to take my cutters and I'm going to cut right along that line like so. Okay, all the way down like so. Bingo. Now, I'm going to take this and put it in my vise right up to the edge that I had before. I'm going to tighten it down and I'm going to pull it forward just a little bit like that. Okay. Then I'm going to open it back up. It would help if this were on the edge, but that doesn't work out for the camera angle. And I'm going to go down and do the same thing over here. Okay right up to that seam where they both came together and I'm going to bend it over like this. Okay, now, you see what I've done here? I have taken and built a flap that's going to beat down over this. That way there are no sharp angles over here. So, once again, it's just come over here and tap this down, which is going to be a little bit tricky, but you just work it like this. Remember, this stuff is sharp. And so as you bend it forward like this, you're finally going to take your hammer and beat it down. Look at that. See, that's crimped over like that. Now, once again, I'm going to take and go into my vise. Lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. And I'm going to put that there like so. And I'm going to make sure that that's cramped down real nice and straight, like so. And then, of course, as necessary, depending on the length of it, and the teeth of our vise, we are going to move it down like that. Now, we just got a little bit of a sharp edge there, and we don't want those corners to be like that. So we're going to go to the belt sander now and we're going to touch this edge up and these corners. All right guys, there we go. Look at that. Uh, nice and rounded off. Nice and smooth. Nobody's going to cut themselves on it. And it's literally a few minutes of work. Um, I'm going to get this out of the way, but you know, when people see this, they're going to be utterly disamazed and they're going to say, hey, 
where did you get that pick guard mounting bracket? And you can say, well, I got it from the pick guard mounting bracket get in place. Let me get this out of the way and show you how to hook it up on the guitar. Okay, so not queso like cheese. Okay, so, all right. Rosetta Stone, I guess I'm going to put you out of business. Anyway, remember this. This looked like it was going to work okay, except I was worried about this being flat. Well, guess what? I can lay this on a concave surface and just beat it and bend it in. I always want to keep this stuff to the inside, okay? But I can bend this by just tapping it over something half roundy and then it will sit right down in there on that radius. I certainly don't want to beat on it with the radius uh, with the guitar, but this is kind of what we're talking about. So somebody's going to say, well, you know what? This, this was going to work pretty well, except it was a little long like so. So fine. I can take it there. I can grab this and I can bend this and then I can bend this. See, like so. So I'm going to start where the holes are, okay, and I'm going to bend like that, like so, and then just bend this the way I need it. Perfect, just like that. Now, I'm going to take and flip this up, and I'm going to put this where it goes right here. Just put this off to the side. We'll put a mark right there, and I'm going to put a mark right there and that is in the middle okay you see that okay now i'm going to take my awl i've found where the center is going to be i'm going to go where those marks are those two marks i'm going to tap a little bit there and get myself a starting point those correspond with the existing holes on the guitar i'm not going to drill new holes and i'm going to take a bit that's big enough to accept the screw that i'm going to put in there and I'm just going to drill through, like so. And then, of course, I am going to go through and go over to the belt sander and make sure there's nothing rough there. You see that? All right. There we go. Now I can do whatever I want to do. I can paint this chick flick teal. I can paint it any color I want. I can age it. Um, and... I know for a fact that this is built to fit this guitar. So let me get this mounted here and I'll show you what it looks like. What do you know? It mounts right to the guitar just like it's supposed to. Nothing's curved there. And now I can bend this up like this. And of course, it would have been easier if I would have drilled my hole for this, but now I can do this. Look at that. And I can mount this and the weight of the potentiometers will draw this down a little bit. It'll be more stable when I do this one up here. So how am I going to do that? Well, hey, guess what? I already did. Remember, there's two holes up here. See them? And I'm going to need a hole to mount the pit guard up here with a little bit of room underneath it. All right, there we go. We got one on the front, see that? Using the holes that were original. We got the one right there. And I'm gonna take these off and, and weather them up and do something with them because they're junky. And they're meant to be junky because, well, name of my stuff's Paul Miro Junk Pile Guitars. Imagine that. But anyway, all I got to do now is figure out where on this my hole is going to be. I'm going to use number four uh, bolts again with aviation or nylon washers or stop nuts. And there we go. Easy money. All right, guys, that was really easy. You can see that underneath there is going to give us room for a potentiometer. Our uh, coil will mount over here. Our wires that we're going to run through, we're going to replace this pin jack uh, or uh, strap pin that's already coming out. We're going to replace that with a with uh, one with a jack built into it. So uh, we're going to have to put a wire through one of these existing holes here. But yeah, we are not 
doing Gibson or Fender or Martwin restorations here. We are just junk piling stuff together and I hope you can appreciate that, especially those of you on a budget, but it really doesn't get any easier than that. Um, so, um, if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe, uh, click the notification bell and uh, give me a like below if you like this kind of stuff. I've got some cigar box guitar videos hiding in the background ready to roll out uh, when I get these playlists done. But I really, really have been working hard to get this Archcraft back together uh, with a pickup in it so it will sound like it did when it was period correct. Or you can play trash blues down in Long Beach on it if you need to. But uh, it's important to me I get this wrapped up. And thanks for staying with me. We're almost done. That said, I will see you next time when we hot rod this thing up and hear some electric sound out of it.